All right, so the new patch is here. I am a couple days late on it, and the reason why I waited a couple days is we have some pretty interesting quality of life changes that have come to us in Onmyoji. But before we actually get into all the beats, let's go ahead and take a look at the update notice and what it has to let us know. So, uh, first off, the first updates do include the new event, the Hozuki no Retetsu and Onmyoji crossover event is upon us. Uh, starting April 4th, after the update, you'll be meeting, uh, able to meet Hozuki, Oko, Peach Maki, and Karashi from the Hozuki no Retetsu world. By the way, if I'm killing these names, just... That's what it is. Uh, sorry, I kill them. That's that... I, I got nothing for you. Okay, so... <clears throat> This is the first of only two opportunities you'll get with these limited edition characters. So this is the thing that I really wanted to talk about real quick. Everyone's freaking out that there's no way that they can let collect the number of shards needed in order to summon Hozuki, the SSR, in the time frame that they've given uh, if they're free to play. Which, okay, yeah, in this first event, that's probably true. However, there's going to be two of these events, right? So you have time to farm as much as you can in this event, and then you start saving if you really want them for the second event. Now, if you say it's not really worth it, fine, I understand, don't worry about it. But, do keep in mind that he might actually be attainable even if you are free. Uh, free to play. So... Uh, take a look through here, give some information about who he is uh, as a character and uh, how he is like the, the basically he's he's a secretary for Enma. <laughs> that's that's really what it comes down to. So the event is running from April 4th to uh, update, sorry, it's running from April 4th to April 15th. So we have 11 days uh, to actually work on this. Should be plenty of time uh, to get quite a bit done. You have to collect 50 shards in order to summon him. Uh, and so the thing with the 50 shards is that you you can get those from an exploration zone um, And we'll talk a little bit about that expert or that that demon seal in just a little bit here But you can only get one shard a day, which means during the event you can collect up to 11 shards uh, If I'm doing my math correctly unless unless of course the April 15th number is you know after April 15th It's cut off um, I'm not quite sure at the timing up to April 15th at 23:59 EST. So yeah, so that should be a full 11 days. So you should have 11 days so you can get 11 shards plus whatever you summon through um, through SSRs uh, or through uh, through summonings, regular summonings. Okay, besides after cleaning, uh, besides after cleaning the exploration zone, there's a chance to find. You'll get to find it. Okay, so that's all the standard stuff. They're just letting you know that you can summon the demon seal. Um, same thing with uh, with Oko, uh, the SR Oko. You can actually get her through shards as well. They are fewer required, and you get them more frequently. So she should not be a hard time to collect. Uh, and then finally, uh, the Arashikigami, Peach Maki, and Karashi are uh, are going to be available through the shrine for 200 tickets each however if you want to skill her up without using skill dharmas you're actually going to need to uh to buy multiples from the shrine um, the skill that you really want to level up will require four at a minimum extra but we'll talk about that in a second here all right the paper doll uh event uh, returns and that's going to allow you to get gourmet cards uh, from from them as a chance you can also get dharmas and all kinds of stuff but uh they seem pretty rare in my in my experience so far so probably not going to be a huge thing to worry about uh new skins are on sale for ibraki doji and utengu uh they both look sweet i got the one for ibraki doji i've seen a lot of the utengu ones i think they look pretty cool um, those do have a 20% off for the first week only, so if those are ones that you're considering, I highly suggest taking a look and buying those immediately. Alright, so the limited amulet packs are on sale. Uh, I've taken a look through these. They don't look super high-end. I mean, they're, they're nice, but they're not as good as those previous packs we talked about. Um, I'm not going to worry about breaking down the math because they seem fairly easy to assess from a, from a distance here. But yeah, daily rewards for three days. Um, you get an amulet. So essentially, this is three amulets and uh, three grade dharmas. Uh, oh, sorry. Grade three dharmas. You get two of them. Okay, so two grade three dharmas and three 
uh, mystery amulets. They have just a bunch of different packs that they have that they came out with. Uh, you can take a look through and kind of decide on these. Um, but realistically, they, they kind of all look like they're about, you know, your average kind of thing. Nothing particularly special there. Uh, and then finally, they have some optimization and bug fixes. Um, they don't talk a lot about these. <laughs> Which, by the way, this is actually really funny. Number three, modify the sitting posture of SSR Hana to make her seem more elegant. Like, okay, I mean, of everything they did in this patch for quality of life, you would think that they would have called that out over this, but that's what they called out. Um, and then enabled the Dujan feature for PC, uh, which I'm not quite sure exactly what that is. Ah, whatever. Okay, quick break in for this. Uh, enabled the Dujan feature for the PC. Reading through here, there's some stuff in here about a, a series of events for Dojin art. Prizes included Awakening the Master in game. So there's a, there was something that seemed to happen in the game around Dojin art, which makes me think that that might have something to do with the event that's going on for the artwork. However, if that is the case, it still doesn't seem to be working on the PC because when I go to this... Um, I'm blind, apparently. When I go to this, I still can't. I still can't do anything with any of this. So I don't know if that's the case or not, but that's that, that's what it seems to be implying. Okay, so uh, with the Hozuki stuff, uh, that's going to be something where it's going to be a little bit difficult to actually get. It's going to take 50 shards. Uh, you're going to have to farm his his uh, seal every day. Um, however, I will tell you that it's actually pretty rewarding to run his seal. It's actually worth quite a bit of gold. So if I can just go ahead and drop you a quick little piece of information here. When you log in each day, make sure you're going in and you're going to your team. And at the top, you're going to see Hozuki's. Uh, that's actually a demon seal that you can run. You can click on match and it'll start put putting you in a queue similar to Kraken. When you go in and run it, you're going to want to make sure that you're actually using a good team. Because he is much more tougher than you would normally expect. Um, so, you know, your standard kind of stuff, if you can use a booster, uh, a booster, a shiki, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the end of this so you guys can see what have, uh, so I can show you what I was going to show you. And, uh, I'll see you in just a second. Bye. Okay, so, when you get to the end here, even if you've gotten your one shard for the day, it'll pop up right here as a shard. You also get quite a bit of gold. I'm running this without a booster, and I got 8,605. Generally speaking, I get anywhere with a booster of 1,500, uh, sorry, 15,000 to 20,000 gold. You can do this every half hour. Highly, highly suggest doing this as a good way to farm a little bit of gold. Um, so that's that's one little tip for you. So that's that's how you're gonna get your one shard every day uh, for the new SSR. Uh, but in addition to that, you can also summon, and in summoning, you get you get some shards. Now, I don't know how reliable summoning by way of, of AR amulets are, but earlier I did summon through AR amulets, and two of my three AR amulets came up with a Hozuki shard. That could just simply be luck. I'm not sure, but if you have any, eh, try it out. See what happens for you, right? <clears throat> Okay, so unfortunately they don't have a character window inside of the game for me to show you, so we're actually just going to take a look at the Onmyoji wiki page here uh, for Hozuki. So Hozuki has uh, some pretty pretty decent stats. Um, he's going to have an S rank in attack, an S rank in speed starting at a base of 110. Not too bad. Uh, a little bit lower than a lot of the commonly used fast S rank monsters, but that's not too, too big of a deal. And a 10% crit, uh, excellent starting spot for him. Uh, and then uh, attack is also going to be at 3,189. Uh, HP, just a little bit low, uh, but his he does have a good defense to compensate for that. All right, so let's take a look at his abilities. His abilities are pretty standard. It is important to notice that his attacks start with the first attack being weak and the second attack being strong. The same thing is emulated in his special attack. And uh, we'll take a look at that real quick. But the first one is is his first attack does a 30... He does a, a multi-attack of two swings. One being a 30% damage and then the other being a 70% damage. In his special, 
he actually will swing three times, one dealing 44, one dealing 88, and one dealing 132. There is a very specific reason for this, and that's because his passive, when Hozuki deals damage, there's a 22% plus effect accuracy cause to, uh, chance to cause target to be dazed for one turn. And when he is awakened, that becomes Hozuki is guaranteed to uh, guaranteed crit against any unit who is dazed. So this has a couple things to it. Then, one, it means that you can hold off on on ruining him with tons of crit chance, and you can instead focus on crit damage and attack power. In addition to that, it means that you can go for effect accuracy and get stuns in. Now. This is one option that I heard of. However, someone pointed out something very important. This is almost the perfect kind of thing you would want to see in your damage dealer for a fire rain team. So I'm looking very much forward to seeing how he can do in fire rain teams. It's possible he might be in one of the strongest nukers for that particular setup. Okay, so let's take a look at Oko. So Oko is the SR in this particular event, and in addition to being summonable only by shards, she is very easy to summon by shards. Um, the, she apparently pops up quite frequently in, in shards that you're going to summon with. All three of my AR summons produce three of these. So I am looking forward to seeing exactly how frequently she pops out and I do my big summoning session tonight. Um, but. You only need to collect 40 as opposed to 50. However, this will be hard to get all of her skill ups then, but it does mean that she is a little more obtainable. You should be able to get her. Uh, Onmyoji will obtain Oko after accumulating 50 summons. This event is only available for players above level 15. So another point there is that you're automatically going to get one when you have uh, reached... Well, it's hard to tell. You know, it's, it sounds like they're saying, right? So, so here's the problem. She is available after 40 shards, right? However, she is also available once you've summoned her, summoned 50 times. So it sounds like you're going to get a copy of her at 50 times, at 50 summons, and you can also summon her once you have 40 shards. So let's take a look at her abilities real quick. So here's Oko. Um, a couple of things that stand out to me right away is that her speed is fairly high at a base of 114 once awakened. She is 3,162 S rank on her attack. And then she is at least B rank on everything else, keeping her, you know, fairly mid tier on that. Okay, so for Oko, she's kind of an interesting counter unit. So her first uh, is skill is just a basic attack for 100% damage that can be skilled up. But she has a passive that becomes fairly interesting once you awaken her. So every time Oko attacks, the enemy will receive a layer of snake silhouette effect lasting for three turns. Every layer gives minus 8% defense for a maximum of three layers. So she can stack up to a minus 24% damage or defense reduction on the enemy. The thing that makes it really interesting is once she is awakened, it adds on that when any uh, when enemies attack any allied Onmyoji or Shikigami, Oko has a 25% chance to use her normal attack to retaliate, which means that on a counter unit, she will not only be putting out net minus 8% uh, damage uh, defense reductions, she'll also be countering, which is going to give you extra damage. So in addition to this, her special is a fairly large attack. Uh, that does extra damage for every stack of snake shadow but in addition to that she will daze them if they have three stacks of the snake silhouette so as time goes on it will actually get worse um, her counter attacks so if you can have a counter team that is long lasting she's going to start wrecking people okay so peach maki let's go ahead and talk about what makes her so interesting uh, first off, she still has a fairly decent base speed. I think this is a little bit slower than Yama. Let me bounce out and check. Yeah, so she is five base speeds slower uh, than Yama, so you should be aware of that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, she has a fairly high defense here, a decent HP, uh, crap on the attack, crap on the crit, but that's not what you're actually going to be using her for. 
So, uh, first off, basic attack on her first attack. Her special is also kind of interesting. Um, basic attack on her first attack. Her uh, passive is also kind of interesting in that it has a chance to uh, basically take some of the damage she takes and just wipe it out. So, there, uh, there's a 30% chance that anytime she's dealt damage, 50% of it essentially just be nullified. Uh, which is really cool. It's going to make her very survivable and an excellent booster to stay in long term. But here's where she gets really interesting. Her special, only costing two orbs, uh, is going to allow her to, uh, to increase attack bars by up to 25% when she's max skilled. Which, just to confirm, so this entire next section is me explaining how Yama actually has a 20% attack boost. Well, I was wrong. It's actually a 30% attack boost, which means that this is a big problem when it comes to Orochi 10. We'll get into this in a little bit, but let's go ahead and jump back to what I was saying as, as Yama. And so what really makes this interesting is, one, she doesn't have a third skill that gets wasted from time to time, um, with like Yama has, right? But in addition to that, she has a heal instead of an attack bar buffer. Or attack or attack, a damage buffer, which is something that you likely already have Saimai doing if you are running in most groups, or even in a double pull situation where you have Kama, Kama is then giving an attack buff. So it doesn't matter. So in most cases, she can simply replace Yama with no problem whatsoever. Now, if you need that attack buff, you still are going to want to run Yama. But otherwise, it looks like Peach Maki might actually be an excellent replacement for Yama. Okay, so here is the clip from running with NCC later in that evening when he had informed me that I was wrong about the Yama speed boost. So in this case, we are going to use Peach Maki as the attack bar booster here. In this case, uh, his Utengu is 126 speed. The Abume is 121 speed. It is going to be the breaking point for where 25% attack bar boost makes a difference versus 30%. And this is where it becomes a problem for a Rochi 10. On the first wave, you'll be absolutely fine. However, if you pay attention to the attack bar on the right, you'll notice that Shuzu will cut in in between Utengu and Ubume. So Zashiki goes and then all of a sudden she goes then. This will slow down your run. In most cases, it will not cause you to wipe. In wave three, however, you do have a wipe mechanic. If you look, Utengu does go before Yerohime. In this case, we happen to have been able to kill both of the Utengus before they were able to have a turn. But should this have been a time when we needed Yerohime to actually get the kill uh, that would have been a wipe for the team? This means that, unfortunately, very slow units uh, we're not going to make it on wave 3, and anything less than 122 will unfortunately be too slow to be able to keep up with the Shuzu in wave 2. This making her, unfortunately, not a Yama replacement for Orochi. Okay, so one final point when it comes to Peach Maki. With Peach Maki having to buy her from the shrine, it can be very expensive. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're purchasing only up to four at a, extra at a time. Like your first one should just be four. Because what you're trying to do is max out this skill right here. The Hell Idol. So currently, I've had one go into each. Which means I'm going to have to buy at least another one. Uh, but uh, what you're attempting to do is uh, go in. Let's see here. She needs to be promoted, I believe. And you can go ahead and promote uh, using her copies. Wherever they are. Okay, so I'm going to promote using these two. And what you're hoping for is that it's going to go into Hell Idol, right? And if it doesn't, you have to buy extra. What a surprise. It goes into her first skill. Okay, so I will likely have, be having to purchase the maximum number in order to completely skill her up. But you may not have to, so make sure you're only buying four extra at first, leveling up Hell Idol to see if it goes all four into Hell Idol. If it does, you're good. But if not, you might be having to purchase more. Okay, so the second event that is going on at the same time is the Paper Doll with Treasure appears. Uh, and in this one, you have the chance to have special gourmet uh, cards drop for your Realm Guards. 
These are similar to the lightning drums in that they are G2 drum, uh, cards and that they give you a large amount of XP in a short amount of time and give you additional rewards. This is going to be running from the 4th to the 10th, so less time than the Hozuki event is going to be running. Uh, and it will just randomly appear inside of the battles you're having in the Explorer Zone. So you'll jump in, and instead of the normal Shikigami that's supposed to be there, there'll be a paper doll. You kill it, and at the end, when you're getting your rewards, you can get all kinds of stuff. Um, they, they, they like to point out that it's Gourmet Realm cards as a chance. However, I've seen various kinds of Dharmas. I've not heard of skill Dharmas being any of them. Uh, mostly it's just base and grade Dharmas that you should expect to see. But um, I spent about 400 AP yesterday trying <laughs> to do XP farming and saw one during that entire time. Other people spent like 12 and saw three of them. So I don't know. It's all about luck. Maybe you'll get it. Maybe you won't. But uh, it's something to keep an eye out. If you see it drop, that's what they're giving you is the cards for your realm. You can go in and use those. So I jumped back into to, uh, Sparkle's uh, realm here and I noticed that she actually did have a gourmet card shown here. And so I wanted to show you guys real quick what that looks like. It has about six hours of time on it to begin with. It is uh, This one is considered a G4. Gives 4,000 experience per hour. An excellent return on investment. The random reward plus one per hour makes me think that that's just going to be shards. I wouldn't, you know, those are a nice thing to have. Uh, but these are pretty, pretty nice little experience machines. So keep an eye out for those whenever you're farming those paper dolls. Okay, so those are the events going on. Not a lot going on. It's kind of um, a more of a passive event. But really the big thing with this update that I wanted to talk about are some of the quality of life changes that have happened. So let's go ahead and jump over to some of those right now. The first and most mundane is just a new skin for the Demon Parade. I kind of like it. It looks really nice, uh, but otherwise that's about it. Nothing too major there. Okay, so this actually brings me to my next feature that I'm super excited about in this uh, that I do think is, is worth mentioning. Uh, they've actually now included a preview of the team that you're going to be fighting when you actually go in and select your options in here. So now if I was to go in and fight Minhen, I would know beforehand what I'm actually looking at. Now normally speaking, since Realm Raids don't cost anything if you lose, this wouldn't be a big deal. But there is one situation that I would find it to be very interesting in even before the change I'm about to talk about. The, fir the That particular use case is uh, bounties. So once in a while you get a bounty that is hard to find in the scenario but is a common monster inside of the Realm Raids for defenses. For instance, right now I have a Yama uh, bounty, and so I can go through and find everyone who has a Yama and quickly do those if I wanted to. So, um, and, and let's be honest, in this case, they're almost all gonna use Yamas, but here's one, for instance, that does not use Yama. So I could skip this if I was trying to save time. The thing that has changed that I'm really, really liking is that now you can lock your lineup. So if you're going through and knocking out, you have 20 Realm Raid tickets and you need to go through all of them. Well, it's really easy now. So, well, it's, it's still the same difficulty, but it's now actually going to be a little bit faster because you no longer have to wait to actually click on the ready when you actually know you're going to be ready right away if you're using a very static team that you just use through almost all of yours. So, for instance, I have a standard double puller lineup. I'm going to go into almost all of these using that, and so I don't really need to change much. So it's going to auto start up, and it's going to go ahead and go. And bam, we're off to the races. So that's a nice little feature. I'm a big fan of that. Okay, so the next thing that's a, a really big deal, it's actually an excellent quality of life change, is the notification for bonuses. If you notice at the top here, there's a little pinwheel. If I was to click on a bonus and activate it, say my Avo Extra Materials uh, one, it begins spinning. So no matter where I am, anytime I go in to do something, I'm going to see that little notification spinning. So let's jump into a an Evo here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and challenge, and I jump in, and I'm going to see that, hey, I do have a bonus running, so I can verify that. So that's that's extremely useful. So one small change that they made that you is kind of interesting uh, is you can now change your clock to display either server time, which is listed as Eastern Standard Time, or your local time, uh, which for me is also Eastern Standard Time, but they don't change with our Daylight Savings Time stuff. So for me, it's currently 738, or represented here as 1938, 
uh, server time, it is 1838. Um, I don't know that I like this feature. I wish... So here's, here's my problem with this feature. Here's something they could have fixed. Currently, it is 1838 server time, right? Locally, it is 1938 server time. One of the things I would have liked to have them have done is in the events menu, if I switch it to my local time, have these automatically switch to the local time as well. So for instance, uh, the, the duels, right, start at 2000 to 2100. Now, server wise, that is going to be four hours from now, right? If I was, if I was thinking, you know, eight o'clock in my head, right? I'd be waiting for eight o'clock. However, it wouldn't start until nine o'clock. It would be much better to me if the time here was represented here and that it said uh, 2100 instead of 2000. Um, I think that would have been a better change, but for now at least, if you want your time to local to represent your actual local time, you can click on that and have that as an option. Okay, so there is one final feature I want to cover, and it's kind of a nice feature, something I've been thinking about for a while that needed to be fixed, and that's actually your ability to auto-join and leave company groups that you're a part of. So let me go ahead and jump into a group here right now, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, so I'm at the end of a run here, and generally speaking, this is the point where most people would actually invite you. And if you click on this button, you are now locked in as an auto-invite, and you are no longer able to quit out. Which has been a problem, right? Normally in the past, if you have, if you're done, if you, if I decide after this run, I'm done, I have to either get out, I have to rejoin into the auto join and get out before the team would actually allow me to do that. You know, if they're, if they're moving quickly through, I might not have the chance. I might have to close, uh, my actual, my, my, close my app, uh, which also, you know, if I'm trying to continue and, and move on, that's a problem, right? Or I would just have to leave in the middle of this and that's just wasted AP. So we're going to see here real quick once we're done with this that I'm going to get automatically pulled in. And if the person is moving quickly, I'm going to have a problem. Um, and by the way, if you just saw that ring toss happen, that's what I'm talking about. That's what Peach Maki solves. Okay, so I go through here, right? And I finish up, I decide I'm done, right? I don't want to run anymore. Well, I don't really have a lot of options. I get pulled in, he starts, and I'm stuck. The new option, and this is true if you're a host or if you're a non-host, right? If you're a host who you don't want, if you want to be done, you don't want to auto-invite a bunch of people afterwards, right? Or if you're a non-host and you don't want to be pulled back into the party, there's now a little gear on your character. If you click on that, you're going to have a checkbox that says auto-matching. I'm going to uncheck that now, and we're going to see what happens when I get out of here. Okay, so we finished it up. I'm going to go ahead and collect my rewards, and I'm going to be out. Now, when I leave, instead of being automatically pulled in, it now pulls up a new listing for whether or not I want to join. I don't want to join. I move on, and then all of a sudden, being locked into a run is no longer a thing anymore. This is an excellent change, and I'm glad to see that they are fixing it. By the way, the whole time, if you've been noticing, this has been running. In times past, I would not have noticed, and all of a sudden, I would have lost valuable hours off my Evo farm uh, bonus. But because of that notification running there, I noticed that, and uh, it, it's an excellent quality of life change. So, yes, the events aren't particularly top of the line. I do think that Peach Maki is an excellent unit for everyone. I think you should take a look at it and consider purchasing them with any shrine tickets you're able to get a hold of. Um, but the main things were the quality of life changes. I'm really excited about the quality of life changes because it means that NetEase is paying attention to how we play the game and wants to make sure it's easier for us to interact. I think that's an excellent sign of a company that cares about the long-term life of the game and is cares about us as players. And I, I personally, I greatly appreciate it. I come from a game where that did not necessarily happen very often. All right, guys, I hope that I was able to help you out with some of the new events and some of the new changes that have come to the to come to own Miyoji. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you have any comments or questions, uh, I'm always happy to, to address those. So like I said, down below, leave them. Uh, give me a like or dislike how, based on how you thought I did, and uh, subscribe if you're willing to. All right, guys, thank you very much for stopping by. Bye.